Okay, so chapter 12 of the ACE 6th edition personal trainer certification uh, textbook, and this is on considerations for clients with obesity. So again, chapter 12 starts section four, uh, modifying programs <clears throat> for clients with uh, special considerations. In other words, people with obesity, chronic diseases, um, and exercise across the lifespan. Uh, basically, section four is now going to talk to some, some basic modifications you need to consider when you have clients that have these particular considerations. Now, again, we use the term uh, special populations. They don't use that term any, uh, any longer. Uh, they just say clients with special considerations. And so that's what we're talking about. So chapter 12 starts uh, with obesity and what you need to know from a training perspective. Um, when it comes to dealing with individuals that are clinically overweight, right? BMI of 25 to 29.9, clinically obese, BMI of 30 or higher. And of course the different classes or different levels that people are at in their obesity based on how much higher than 30 their BMI is. Um, just keep in mind, now that we've gotten into this section, you have, if you've gone through and studied up to chapter 11, you've done basically the majority of the heavy lifting when it comes to when it comes to material that you really got to know memorize particularly from a testing perspective uh, but now the reality is is that you're going to find in in this particular section a lot of real world uh, information um, that's going to help you so considerations for clients with obesity there are a number of them now as we're going through the chapter I'm going to move through some of the material fairly quick um, it's not a bad idea to read through and skim through this very first part, the possible causes of obesity. And uh, it gives you it gives you kind of an understanding, general overview for the most part of what um, of what causes obesity. Why are people overweight? Why do they have obesity? A lot of uh, research over the past couple of years um, is signaling some other some other, uh, perhaps more important components to the issue, such as genetics and environmental factors that were not really ever taken into account. But obesity affects, obviously, um, um, a whole array of issues. And of course, the risk factors that go along with it. Nutritional, some nutritional guidelines. Remember that we are, we are for the most part, as personal trainees, we are sort of acquiescing to the clinical to the clinical world to kind of give us guidance and tell us um, the best way, the best way to work with work with our clients, right? Um, dietitians, registered uh, nutritionists, things like uh, folks like that, medical doctors. Okay, and so those are the things we need to consider, and that's what they're going to speak to. So, and and then again, exercise guidelines, um, exercise weight management, as well as um, this idea of setting body weight goals. And of course, this idea that we want to have a, a client-centered approach to working with clients that are overweight and obese and um, some other weight loss approaches. Remember, again, you've done the majority of the heavy lifting when it comes to studying and knowing materials about program design, muscular training. Now, the idea is to kind of shift gears a little bit and appreciate and understand that that there are individuals that, that should be working out, want to work out. Um, but need some special considerations um, when you're when you're going through that. Of course, possible causes of o obesity, any number of them, um, then they are generally considered to be clustered a, a cluster of risk factors and issues that compound on each other and create this environmental, this sort of environment, internal environmental scenario where um, an individual is carrying um, way more the way more body weight than they than is healthy. So genetics, for sure, we've always known genetics has played a big part. How big it is uh, related to hormones, things like that, um, and some of the main hormones that we that we do understand that are related to appetite suppression and appetite control, such as leptin. Um, they don't have it in here, but ghrelin is another one, um, adiponectin, and some of these other hormones that. Um, for sure affect or are affected by. The question is, is who's leading the dance, right? Um, 
but we do know that all of these play play into once a person reaches these um, high BMI levels, um, for for the most part, it really doesn't help or make sense to figure out well, you know, why why did this happen? The goal now is to institute a training program, nutritional interventions that's going to help them overcome the uh, overcome these issues. We know that um, sleep is um, heavily affected um, and interacts with obesity. Being obese, high BMIs affects sleep. Sleep then affects hormone levels, um, and of course, there's energy balance. And you can you can um, you can see in Figure 12, one all of the variables that basically uh, basically go into this. It's very complicated, and just keep that in mind. Um, there are basic nutritional guidelines, and ACE tells you beware of your scope of practice. Right, you're not writing diets for people. You're not telling them specifically what to eat. But what are you doing? Well, you are. Um, speaking to them and making recommendations, uh, page 562, portion control, right? Um, eating frequency, you know, small, small um, snacks, foods throughout the day, um, and consuming foods high in nutrient density, right? So high fiber foods, lots of vegetables, plant-based materials um, that are nutritionally dense, but not calorically dense, right? These are these general guidelines um, that you can talk to folks about. Total energy expenditure, daily total en energy expenditures is basically, you know, a compilation of all the different energy expender expending variables, the resting energy expenditure, the REE factors into about 60 to 70% of total, total energy expenditure throughout the day. Um, at the bottom of page 562, there's a sample mathematical formula, just to give you an idea of the equations. Good idea to know these equations. Um, by the way, at least you can you can use them in the real world. And uh, we're back to a little bit what we talked about in a previous chapter on nutrition of uh, recommended daily allowances, just kind of a replay of what you've already already gone through. And then um, and then of course we're moving into going to be moving into the MOVA method. So ABC approach, you can see how we're getting now uh, through the rest of these chapters, there's gonna be a lot of general information and some basic guidelines on individuals in particular here with obesity. And so um, the expand your knowledge, evaluating diets is a good, this is a really good uh, a bit of information with these, with these bullet points. Does the diet uh, recommend exercise doesn't make sense. So basically, you know, in the real world, this is what this is what people are coming to. They're saying, "Well, I'm on this type of diet." Well, here's some questions I want to ask you about that diet. Um, how does the diet cut calories? What is the nutrient density? You know, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into evaluating diets, and that's what that's um, that's what that's doing. So really, really good information there. Mover method, um, handling questions about diets. You're probably going to face this more than anything else. When it comes to when it comes to the nutritional part of your uh, dealing with your clients, remember scope of practice. We don't talk a whole lot about it, but look, for the most part, it's one of the most critical components of helping people with obesity or, or who are overweight. Now there are exercise guidelines, and uh, for the most part, what we try to do with people that are overweight or obese is we, we of course, we want to get um, a physician sign off, we want to make sure that their doctor um, knows that they're get participating in an exercise program. They're going to be really happy about that, but we would like them to give us some assistance with this particular client. And so normally uh, we want to help individuals to understand that the goal is to get them moving, do something on a daily basis um, to, to uh, get into the consistent habit of, of moving and exercising at low to moderate levels of intensity, um, helping with mobility, flexibility, some of those things that we talked about that we, you know, we really don't uh, consider when we're when we're dealing with individuals um, with these with these high high BMIs, um, and so uh, that's basically what you're getting on on page 567, uh, 568, uh, specifically cardiorespiratory training. So again, you've got your fit, your frequency uh, when starting out, be as active as, or as many days of the week as possible. I mean, 
a lot of this now becomes intuitive. We would like people that are overweight and obese to every day do something. That's the goal. Every day do something. Um, and we, we would like it to be structured in 20 minutes and 30 minutes, just like we do with, with, uh, with anybody else. Um, intensity, exercise at a moderate level of intensity. Again, there's a lot of factors that go into this. Um, but if an individual is obese, they've never trained before, uh, honestly, just getting them to walk for 20 minutes is going to bring them up to a high, to a moderate level of intensity. We're still using the VT1, you know, the, um, the zone uh, training scenario below VT1, zone one. Time exercise 30 to 60 minutes per day. Um, and again, here it is. We're, we're not saying anything different than we said about any other client uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to cardio training. Uh, perform low impact. Now, this is a little bit different, of course, because of their body weight. They could put stress on the knees and the ankles and joints of the body that just not necessary. So low impact uh, rhythmic exercises uh, using large muscle groups, right? So that of course makes sense. And of course we want them to enjoy what they're doing. Um, initial programming considerations. Um, of course, this is going to take into account what we just talked about with getting a physician release, ensuring that they have been uh, checked out and um, risk have been um, uh, ameliorated by their physician telling us, yes, they're good to go. Just keep it you know, low impact, low to moderate intensity and, um, and you should be good to go from your initial, initial programming. And there are some biomechanical considerations. Now, you'll notice that because of the size of an individual, there are biomechanical considerations for cardio, um, cardio training. And so um, we're looking at weight bearing, uh, weight bearing modes and non weight bearing modes of, of training modalities. The, um, you know, again, the idea here is that number one, the client should enjoy what they're doing. It should be low impact. And we just need to make sure, make sure that they're doing, uh, doing these exercises, low, lower risk. Swimming is a great, is a great modality. If they like, they like to do that. And that's basically what they're saying, saying here, swimming and water exercise programs. Um, great way to, to burn calories and get active with with the um, addition of keeping of keeping those biomechanical uh, uh, risk and injury potentials down. So it's a great way to, uh, especially if they can get to it, right? If you have a, they have a pool, whatever the case is. And then um, table 12.1 gives you some information on changes um, after 13 weeks of exercise. Again, this would be sort of an average ideal, uh, ideal reduction. Um, but again, the, the irony is here is that, look, if they don't gain weight, sometimes that's better. That's a, that's a win. That's a win right off the bat is that their, um, their progression, their progression of weight gain is stopped by the training. Then if we can get them back down, that would be great as well. So what is the muscular training guidelines or considerations? Well, um, again, frequency, intensity, a uh, time and type. Um, not a whole lot of, not a whole lot of differences or changes, um, for the individual. There are just some basic, um, uh, biomechanical issues that you've got to, you got to keep in, keep in mind. Um, I've trained a number of, um, obese, obese clients. And basically what it comes down to is the, the physicality of putting them on pieces of equipment or doing certain movement patterns that are simply not a, not appropriate because they they are simply unable to biomechanically get into positions or, or do certain things that are, are being, um, are an impediment because of the, because of their large body size, not a big deal. There's so many ways that you can train individuals from a, from a, uh, muscular training perspective. And again, you'll notice that as you're going through, um, this chapter and you're reading through this, most of this is general information, um, exercise and weight management. So again, just keep in mind your scope of practice and what you're able to do from a nutritional perspective. Um, but exercise, as they say, plays an important role um, in the reduction of excess body weight. The point here is get active, be active, take care of the nutritional so that we create a caloric deficit and, and the individual is able to then manage and lose and lose weight. So 
Again, nothing that you don't already know, combination of exercise and proper sensible eating produces the best long-term results. And um, you expand your knowledge, not gaining is winning. Like I said, sometimes stopping this, this uh, progression of increasing body weight, but, 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 but you stop it. That's, um, that's actually a win. So and then of course, setting body weight goals um, is a, is a good idea because giving an individual some, something to shoot for is going to be helpful and beneficial, kind of like the smart acrostic that we, that we talked about. Um, again, a lot of this comes down to uh, following the guidelines of their, of their clinician, of their doctor, nurse practitioner, nurse, whatever the case is. Um, and then moving, moving forward with that mover method, here's another, another, um, uh, another way to uh, kind of get into the discussion and talking with individuals that are obese or overweight, we'll read through that, um, important information, client centered approach, um, to working with clients that are, that are overweight. Again, we're, um, we're just kind of reiterating what we've already spoken about. There is, you know, there is a fair amount of overlap here. Nothing wrong with that. Although this is giving you more um, specific. Table 12.2 now, chief components of a behavior weight loss. Again, this is intuitive, right? Caloric reduction, physical activity, um, and behavioral strategies uh don't be concerned that you're that you're going over some of the same material this is what's helping you to um, embed this information into your mid and longer term memory um, it's a good idea to know all of these all of those bullet points and then again they're just throwing more practical information out at you uh, journaling for instance in the mover method on page uh, 581 582 um, and then there are other weight loss strategies that a personal trainer should know about. There's pharmacological interventions. Read through it. It's interesting. A lot of people are doing it. Um, there's bariatric surgery. They kind of save this to the end. Um, it's just information for you to kind of keep in mind. Um, there are a fair amount of medications uh, for the trainer. You know, the idea is that if it's being, if it's being managed by their physician, you just need to know what meds they're taking and what the, what the uh, contraindications are when it comes to training and everything else that goes along with it. For the most part, people with obesity that are under the care of a clinician um, are relatively, uh, relatively easy, simple to work with because you have so many of the variables already under control. Your job is to make sure that they are training safely, right? In a, um, uh, in a supportive environment that's now going to help them to be consistent along this uh, path <clears throat> to stop the weight gain and then ultimately to lose weight. Um, and uh, that's it for that's it for chapter 12. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on chapter 13.